Let us try to solve the exercise number seven in the part B of Java Lab. In this exercise, uh, we are supposed to create a user interface that performs the basic integer operations. The user enters two numbers in the text field, namely number one and number two. And the result of the operation must be displayed in the result text field when the user clicks on the equal button. Also, appropriate uh, exception handling message need to be displayed when the number one and the number two are not uh, integer as well as when the number two is zero and when the division operation is performed. So let's try to start a Java project. Again, you don't need to create the Java project every now and then. You can always uh, use the existing Java project. Like if you have a Java project which you have already created, just go here and add a new class and then you can go ahead with it. And because uh, if you start creating a Java project like this, there will be too many Java projects. Again, to get rid of them, you can just right click and then uh, go for a delete. And there is an option to delete the source files also. If you say yes, the entire project along with the source files will be deleted permanently from your hard disk. Now, to give the demonstration, I'm going to start a new project. So I'm going to click on the file and new project. And under the ant, I'm going to select Java application. And you can give uh, any name for this one. Okay. I'm going to say integer arithmetic. You can give uh, any name. Let me make it as AS capital. Let me zoom in for you. So integer arith. Where is this uh, arithmetic? What is this? I'm typing arithmetic operations okay, you can give any name and then click on uh, finish so when the project is created i'm not going to use uh, the default application i'm going to create a, a new class as together you can create it in this class itself but i'm going to create a new class for uh, this particular exercise so you have this uh, project with you and uh, if you already have a project, this is what you're supposed to do it. Just right click and say new class, that is new Java class, and give it uh, any name. So you can uh, straight away do it from any of the existing project. You just add a new class and uh, you, you are ready to go. Let me give um, the name of this class as a simple calculator. And I'm going to just uh, finish it up. Again, you no, no need to create a new class as such you can use the existing class now we need a constructor that's going to create the interface for us so let's create a constructor i'm going to press control space and uh, i'm going to use the default constructor by just double clicking on it you can type it if you really are interested in and what i'm going to do is i'm going to first create a j frame so I'm going to say J frame and uh, press the control space. And the NetBeans is going to tell me that, uh, are you talking about uh, a J frame, which is there in the Java X dot uh, swing package? I'm going to say yes and press enter. The minute you do it, uh, you notice that uh, the NetBeans has already added a import statement for me. So that's good. And I'm going to just call it as JF. And I'm going to say equal to new J frame. And I'm going to give uh, a string title. So I'm going to go for the this one, okay? String title, and uh, I'm going to call it as a simple calculator. Calculator. Okay. So this is simple calculator. Now you need to specify a few things uh, for this uh, J frame. I'm going to say JF. That is my J frame object that I've just created. I'm going to say I'm going to set. Um, the you can set the layout for it so that is the one thing that you must always create so i'm going to create a grid layout what is the meaning of saying grid layout is i'm going to just create a grid like structure that is a, a table like structure with the rows and the columns so i'm going to create like this a structure this is called as a grid structure with the rows and columns inside it 
So we have to create this kind of structure. So how do you say that is you have to go to the layout manager and uh, you have to create a new instance of uh, the grid layout. I'm going to just type a grid and I'm going to press the control space. NetBeans will help me out with the grid layout. Again, uh, this is available under java.awt. So I'm going to just press enter. One thing you will notice that uh, NetBeans has already added a import statement for me. I don't have to add that thing. When you create the grid layout, there are a few things that uh, you can think of uh, doing. So in this uh, uh, layout, there are a few options that are available. You can specify how many rows are there, how many columns are there. And the vertical and uh, horizontal uh, gaps also you can specify. Also, you have the default constructor, which does not say anything about number of rows and number of columns. I'm going to go with the second constructor, which uh, specifies the number of rows and number of columns. So I'm going to specify that there are six rows will be there. And uh, there will be two columns. So what is that I have just done is uh, that I have just uh, created, what is it? Okay, I think I have uh, typed an extra character there. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a, a grid with the six rows will be there. So assume that uh, I have six rows here. So I have six rows and two columns will be there. So assume that there are six rows are there. So don't, don't just, uh, just count it. I'm just... Uh, uh, showing you that uh, there will be some six rows okay after this i'm going to set the size you can set the size before also i just forgot that let's set uh, the size and i'm going to go with the size for the dimension for the width and the height so i'm going to say width is a 320 pixel so slightly larger and the height is 300 pixel okay so this is what uh, i'm going to do also, uh, one other thing that you must do is whenever you create uh, the J-frame, what will happen if you click on this uh, X button here? So you know very well in Windows, you have this X button, which is uh, used for closing uh, the window. So what will happen when somebody clicks on the X button of that uh, J-frame that you have created? This is very important. Otherwise, you will not be able to close it directly by clicking on the x button so uh, this you have to remember this one so i'm going to say jf dot set the default let me zoom in for you set the default close operation so this is what uh, is it what is the default close operation definitely i want uh, it to exit when somebody close uh, clicks on that one so there is a constant that you can use it from the jframe uh, the jframe class itself so there is a built-in uh, uh, constant is there you just put the jframe and then type uh, enter and uh, these are all constant uh, which are there do nothing on close dispose on close and uh, so many things are there i'm going to exit on close so this is what I'm going to say. There are many constants are available. I'm going to say exit on close. That means to say that uh, when somebody clicks on this uh, close button on the window, in your uh, uh, window, you have this uh, close button. When somebody clicks on this uh, particular uh, close button, when somebody clicks on this X button, I want to exit the application. That is what I said, exit on close this is not uh, the end of it uh, if you want the if you just create this one and if you run the uh, jframe nothing is going to happen you have to say that show that uh, jframe to the user this is the last thing that you are supposed to do it so i'm going to just type it here i'm going to say jf and i'm going to say set visible is equal to true by default uh, uh, the netbase will say that it is uh, true this is the last thing that uh, you generally do it what is the meaning of saying set uh, visible is equal to true is so you want to show that um, particular uh, frame onto the screen make it visible to the user now how do you show this thing just to create an instance of this particular class 
So how do I you can do it is I'm going to create uh, the static void main in this file itself or in this class itself. So I'm going to say public static void main and I'm going to just press enter and NetBeans will do the remaining magic for me. And you can during the examination you can just say create a new instance of a simple calculator. So this is what uh, uh, you can say create a simple calculator instance now if you uh, if you just uh, try to do this one i uh, just to say i'm not uh, saving that uh, uh, let into x equal to like this you don't need to do it just create a new instance of this class so whatever class you have created just instantiate it just create the or just call the constructor of this particular class and the magic will be done for you so i'm going to just run this and i'm going to show you what may go wrong okay so during the examination uh, things may go wrong so if you just run this particular thing i'm going to just run this file so i've uh, compiled it and i'm going to just uh, run this file itself so when you run this particular file you will notice that uh, this is what you're going to see okay so you're going to see this uh, in the output window Later, I'm going to just because I'm giving you a demonstration, I'm going to make some changes to this line. Okay, later I'm going to do it, not now. You can run this. There is nothing wrong in doing that thing because it's not going to handle the threads and so on and so forth, but it's going to run it. Okay, so that is done. Now we need a few things. What are the few things that they have said that there must be a text fields? Okay, so I'm going to do a beautiful uh, interface and you know very well this is going to be a grid interface okay let me run it and uh, just show you what i'm going to do it so you have this uh, particular interface uh, created for you so i have i have created the grid here so in the first line uh, thing over here i'm going to just uh, say enter first number enter let's say first number okay and in front of it uh, I'm going to draw a text box. Similarly, I'm going to say enter second number and in front of it, I'm going to draw a text box. Also, finally, I'm going to say this is your result and I'm going to show the text box in front of it. So I need three text box and three labels. So I need three text box and three labels. Let me create uh, the particular text box and uh, labels for it. I'm going to go uh, to the class uh, variables here. I'm going to create uh, the members member variable here itself. So the first one I want is the J label. So I just type J L A B and control space it and the NetBeans will do the magic for me and it has uh, imported Java X dot swing dot label. So it has imported that thing. And if you are writing uh, during the examination, if you are writing it in the notepad, remember you just put, uh, you have to just put a star here. Just put uh, Java X dot swing dot not here, swing dot star. You just put the star here and uh, ignore the remaining uh, field. Uh, you don't have to write um, any import statement star means all the classes within that package will be imported for you but as of now i'm going to just um, go ahead with the first one so i'm going to call the, the first label as label one second label as a label two label two and the third label as label three okay three labels i've created also i need a text field i will start with the j text okay and if you press the control space, uh, there are a lot of options which are available. I want the text field. I select it, double click on it. NetBeans uh, will put the import statement, uh, Java X dot uh, swing dot uh, uh, J text field. Remember, uh, if you are writing it, uh, just put uh, Java X dot swing dot star. Remaining import statements are not required because they are all inside one package called as a swing. This is a package where you have all the all these things you just put star here string dot star means star means everything all of them will be imported for you so the three text box that you have i can't give any name of my choice 
because they have said that the first text fields are number one, number two, and uh, the result is the result text field. Okay, they have given that name, and uh, I am going to type whatever name that uh, they have given. So the this text field is called as a number one. This text field is called as number two, and the last text field is called as a result. Okay. Three text fields and three labels are created. I'm going to go here. See what I've done up to here is remember uh, you are going to show the J frame at the end. This will be the last line that is going to come. So up to here what I've done is I have created a frame and I have set the grid layout for it and I have set the width and height for it and I've said what will happen when somebody is going to click on this close. Now, if I'm just going to run this one, let me run this one. If you run this one, you're going to see this. Now I have to add a label and I have to add the text box. I have to add one label and one text box and so on and so forth. So let me start adding one after the other. So I'm going to add the first uh, label here. How do you create uh, the label? So the name of the variable is uh, lab1. This is the name I have given, lab1. So lab1 is equal to new instance of this label. This is called as jlabel. I'm going to just press control space and I'm going to type the string here. So what is the string? I have already told you. Enter first uh, number. Okay, this is it. Now you have just created a new label you have to add this one you have to add this label to the the j frame now you have just created that label the label is uh, here you see that label is here this label that you have just created has to be added to the uh, frame here how do you add it it's a very simple to add you don't have to struggle you can just say add okay and press the control space and uh, there is uh, a method for um, adding no uh, sorry not just add uh, you have to add it to the j frame so sorry about that j frame dot um, add method is there now there are a lot of uh, overrides are there i'm going to use the first one itself add one component and what is the name of the component is label one that's the name of the component so you have added one component. So you created a label. In other words, you created a label. You have added that label to the J frame. So let me compile. Let me compile and just uh, uh, rerun it just to show you how it's going to look like. So if I run it, this is what you're going to see. Enter first number. In front of it, I need to create a text field. So I need to create a text field and then add it. So as of now, what you have done is uh, you have created a label here. You have created a label here and you have added this label. So you have added this label. So this adding part is over. Let's create a text field. And uh, what is the name of the first text field is the number one. So this is uh, they have given it. So I don't have a a choice here number let me say n u m number one is equal to this is a new text field so i'm going to say j text field and i am going to say how many columns will be there so let me say five columns will be there so just for fun i'm going to just say that i have created a new text field but i have to add it to the j frame so how do i add it i'm going to say j frame dot add and i'm going to say add a component and uh, this time the netbeans has taken the component properly and the netbeans is saying that okay you want to add the number one to this one so i have added it let me just um, compile it and just show you how it is going to appear now when you run it uh, in the beginning it may not show you in the exact grid format but i'm going to just run it and i'm going to just show it so you notice that uh, it is coming in the next line. Let it come, but uh, you have uh, added a label. Uh, let's uh, let me show you. You have added a label. So this is the label you have added, and you have added the 
a text field. This is your value, but it is not coming in the grid. It should have come uh, here, and this part you should have come here. It's going to come when you add the other component. So in the same way, I am supposed to create uh, the second label and uh, the second text field, and I'm going to add it. So I'm not going to type this whole thing again. I'm going to just uh, select this, uh, control C it, and then go here and say control V it. Now this is the label number two, and I'm going to say enter second number, and uh, I'm going to add this label two, not this label one. This is the second label I'm creating, and I'm adding. In the same way, I'm, I'm going to create a text field for the second number, and uh, let it be five column itself, and I'm going to add this um, second column, I mean, a second text box. Let me compile and rerun it. And uh, if you if you just run it and if it is uh, compiling automatically, just ignore it and you don't need to do it. Now you notice that uh, what I have done definitely it is not coming in the grid. Ignore it. But what you notice is I have created one text field. I have added one text field. I have added a, you know, a label. I have added a text field. I have added the second uh, label and I have added the second text field. After this, I want the result to come so again uh, you don't have to do it i've already copied it but i'm going to just uh, copy this uh, and the control c and i'm going to just paste it and this time i want the label number three and i'm going to say result i'm going to just say result and uh, i'm going to go for uh, the third field third field is result remember the text field the name is result so this is going to be result is equal to text field one and i'm going to add this result here so i don't want to add something else there so let me recompile it yeah, this is the problem with my installation i have to uh, compile it again one uh, one after the other but it's okay let me run it and what you notice uh, here is uh, okay did i added it uh, in a wrong way let me uh, show that so this is a lay oh sorry i've added a label three here just a, a mistake here now this is a, i created a label three and i have to add a label three i created the result and i have to add the result okay let me recompile it now in uh, in your installation uh, the recompilation may be automatic in my case it is not doing it it's okay i'm going to just uh, compile and uh, rerun it and this is how you must see it so you got um, all the three things uh, and what are the three things you have? The first label, the first text field, second label, second text field, and third label and third text field. All are added. Now, after this, I want to add the buttons. For addition, I want to add the plus button. For subtraction, I want to add a minus button. Again, for multiplication, I want to add one button. And for division, I want to add one more button and the for equal that is uh, to show the result i want to add uh, one more thing so i need so many buttons uh, are required for me <clears throat> so let me go ahead and let uh, let me do that part so i'm going to go over here and uh, i'm going to say here is uh, j button let me just say j button so these are buttons uh, I'm going to just say this is plus button, this is minus button, this is multiplication button, this is division button, then this is equal button. So many buttons are there. Now we need to create them. I've just uh, created a variable and uh, we need to create the instance of these buttons and we need to add them one after the other. So let's go here. Remember, set visible is the last thing that you are going to do it. So everything you have to do it before the set visible. You have to, it's like you prepare everything and then make it visible. Yeah. Uh, what happens if you don't do it? Uh, you will see the result also. But generally, this is logical, not to, you must do it. Logically, you first create everything and then display it to the user. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's create um, a new button and the first button that we are going to create is the plus button and uh, we say plus is equal to new j button let me press a uh, control space and i'm going to press a string here 
and the string that I'm going to use is a plus symbol. So this is a plus symbol and I'm going to go to the J frame. I'm going to add this plus here. Okay, so how is it going to look like? Let me save it and uh, let me recompile it. And then I'm going to just um, run this one. And you see, now you see the beauty. Everything has come properly. So now you can feel that there is a grid. Okay, there is a grid with the rows and the columns. You can see that there is a grid now. So it is coming properly now. Okay, this is the plus button. I'm going to get a minus button here, uh, multiplication button here, division button here, and equal button here. So I'm going to get one, uh, all these uh, buttons one after the other. Again, you need to do the same thing for the remaining button. So what is the second thing you are going to add is the minus button. So I'm going to just copy this one, control C and control V. And uh, I'm going to say this is minus and uh, symbol is minus and you are going to add this minus okay, done just for uh, your uh, understanding i'm going to just uh, compile it and i'm going to run this one just to show you that uh, things are appearing so you notice now uh, you have this uh, plus button you have this minus button everything is coming properly let's uh, keep on adding the other two buttons, I'm going to add these two buttons and then compile and run it. So I'm going to first copy paste to this one. This is going to be a multiplication button, M-U-L, and the this is going to be star, and the I'm going to add this button, that is M-U-L button. M-U-L is the name of the button that I've just created. In the same way, I'm going to just um, add the next one also, division button, D-I-V is the name, and this is the symbol. And div will be the symbol okay so let, let's uh, compile and just run it so we'll just compile it and uh, i'm going to run it so you have uh, the plus button minus button star button and uh, this uh, division button i want one more equal button to appear so let me add that button also so I'm going to just uh, paste it and I'm going to say this is, uh, let me zoom in for you. This is equal button. I used the EQ, uh, EQ and uh, this will be EQ. Uh, this is equal. Okay, so this is going to be equal button. Let me show the final version. So this is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to just uh, run this one. Okay, so you have all the buttons. Where is it? Sorry. You have all these buttons created for you, plus, uh, minus, uh, star, and uh, everything. Now, when you click on this one, action has to be performed. So what has to be done when you click on this one? So what action are we going to take? So you have to tell this button that when plus is pressed, what action has to be performed? When minus is performed, what action has to be performed? When star is clicked, what action has to be performed? So we have to go to each and every button and say for every button, what action are you interested in performing? So let's go to this um, first button that I've just created here. That is my uh, plus button here. So I've just added this plus button. I'm going to go to this plus button. And I'm going to add a action listener. So somebody who is going to listen to the action that is performed on them. So I'm going to say add action listener. So what is the meaning of saying add action listener? So this uh, add action listener means when you run this particular thing, okay, let me run it now. This time it just uh, created, it compiled it. See, sometimes uh, this is the magic that it means is doing. So this time actually it compiled it. Let me cut this one and just run it. I'm going to just, uh, for my explanation, I need um, to show you what it's going to do. See, when the button is clicked, there must be somebody to observe this and say that, okay, this button is clicked. 
or when this button is clicked. Somebody has to take that responsibility. So this is what I am saying that. So when this plus button is clicked, who is going to take the action? So that is the biggest challenge now. Who is going to take the action? I'm going to say this is going to take the action. Who is this that I'm talking about? This means the, what is this in this case? The J frame itself. The the uh, what not j frame the uh, this class what is this class calculator class so this calculator class itself is going to observe so when you have this plus button when somebody clicks on this plus button i am going to say that the instance not this class the object that is created out of this simple calculator that is going to listen to this event so when somebody clicks on minus Again, this class, that is the object of this class, that is the simple calculator, will listen to that. So this is going to listen to that class. Now that it's not enough. Huh? If you say who is going to listen to this is this. If you look at here, you notice that uh, when you do this one, the uh, that means itself is going to say that uh, this is not going to work because. Uh, what class you have just created is an ordinary class. It's just a class without anything. It doesn't know how to handle the or how to listen to the event. Now you cannot expect the ordinary class to listen to an event. So to listen to an event, it must have an appropriate method that can handle the events. So this ordinary class that you have just created cannot uh, perform that one. So I am going to say this is an ordinary class, no doubt, but this class will implement, so I am going to say implements an interface and what is that uh, interface if you are wondering and that interface is the action listener. So this is the action listener, this is the event it is going to handle. So what I am saying is uh, this is not just an ordinary class that I have created. This is a class that uh, I am creating. This class that I have just created or this object of this particular class also knows how to listen to a button click event. Okay, that is what I am saying. Okay, but if you just implement the interface, you know very well, whenever you implement an interface, Interface contains, uh, there are a lot of things that the interface can have. Interface generally contains uh, a method declaration and you have to implement that method. So the NetBeans now says that, okay, you have taken the courage to say that this particular class can listen to the event, but where is that method that can perform the magic? So this is what it is saying. So you know very well, interface generally contains um, only method definition and you have to implement it. So if you look at this button here, so if you click on this button, what the NetBeans is uh, going to say that there are abstract methods are there in this particular listener. Do you want me to just write a prototype for all of them? Okay. Instead of uh, me writing all of them, I just uh, give it to the NetBeans and say that, okay, you implement all the abstract methods. So what the NetBeans is going to do is it will look into this um, interface and whatever abstract methods are there, it's going to implement them. So I'm going to just click on it and say implement all the abstract method. When I click on it, NetBeans will automatically add a method. There is only one method which is uh, there fortunately and the method which was there in that interface is the action perform. So this is the only method which is there and you notice that uh, annotation has been added saying that uh, it's an override method which uh, you are writing. So what does what is the meaning of uh, this whole story? Okay. Now I don't know whether it has compiled it. Suppose uh, if it has compiled it properly and uh, if it is running. So what is that you have done with all these magic? The trouble what you have done is uh, whenever, so it's a very simple thing. Whenever somebody clicks on this button, okay, this method is called so simple as that so what i'm saying is whenever somebody clicks on this method uh, this button 
this method is called in this method whatever action you want to take it you write it in this method so you want to add subtract whatever you want to do it write it in this method so when what java is saying is whenever somebody clicks on this button i am going to call this method automatically i am going to club them together i am going to call this method now in this method you do whatever it by default netbeans will say that unsupported operations exception it's going just to throw the exception saying that this is not supported okay uh, because it is not implemented as simple as that okay i'm going to implement it here okay so i will not uh, say throw an exception i'm going to delete this line not really required remember don't um, in the process of deleting don't delete the closing bracket of this method you just delete that line and this closing bracket has to be there so don't delete the closing bracket also okay so this mean to say that this method is called in the same way whenever somebody clicks on uh, the minus button i want this method to be called when somebody clicks on this minus method i want this method to be called when somebody clicks on this uh, star method i want this method to be called when somebody clicks on the division method i want this method to be called when somebody clicks on the equal button this method has to be called so what am i going to say so for the what is this plus button for the plus button you say that action listener is this okay similarly for the minus button so this is for the plus button let me make a one line there this is for the plus button for the minus button also i am going to say for this minus button i am going to add the action listener and who is going to listen is this the netbeans now is intelligent enough to say that this class can implement it in the same way for the multiplication i am going to add the action listener and uh, i'm going to say add action listener and who is going to handle this is this in the same way for division i am going to say div add action listener and who is going to handle is this so let me so is helping me out this time and for the last one and that is a equal button okay i'm going to add the action listener and who is going to handle it and if you notice that i am not typing the whole thing i am making the netbeans do its work by pressing enter sign whenever the appropriate option is shown to me so when you press enter sign automatically netbeans will do the magic for you so if you run this particular thing if you compile and clean build and just run it so what you notice is nothing is going to happen you notice that when you click on this plus minus equal to division nothing is happening why because you notice that whenever you click on any of this button you are going to call this method any all this button because you have set the action listener but this method is blank so nothing is happening so this method is called but there is nothing to be done in this method okay now what they are saying is you type two numbers here say 10 and 20 and you click on this plus button here when you click on this plus button uh, you won't get that uh, error message so that is because of my antivirus which uh, I, again i think i have no times i have told you that person who has written that uh, is not able to decide that there is no internet connection and that is why it is cannot update it okay uh, anyhow Uh, let's let's come back to my story here so i have this uh, 10 and 20 i clicked on the plus sign immediately you are not supposed to show the result according to them you have to show the result only when equal button is clicked okay result is uh, displayed in the result text box when equal button is clicked so you type 10 20 plus and then when you click on equal sign you have to show the result so immediately you are not supposed to show it so you must remember which button is clicked remember when you click on the equal button you must know which are the two numbers and which among these four buttons are clicked so you must remember in other words you have this um, 
operands and you have this operator so when equal button is clicked definitely you can get the operands those are these two numbers but you must remember which is the operation that need to be performed so you have to remember that thing so i'm going to create a variable that's going to remember the which operator is clicked so let me go to my netbeans now and i'm going to go right at the top and i'm going to say a character variable called op that is operant which operant is clicked so one extra variable which operant is clicked okay done let's go to the bottom side now so here i am going to now i have to know suppose if i run this one now all these buttons if you notice that all these buttons are connected to this method so when i click on the plus button this method is called when i click on minus method this method is called when i click on star this method is called when i clicked on division this method is called and this method is called now the question is in this method how can i know which among these buttons were clicked because every button is going to call the same method if every button was calling different different method then it was very easy but now every method uh, every button is calling the same method how can i know which button is clicked for this whenever a event is generated what is this event click event is generated these buttons all these buttons uh, will create a object called as action event in this action event this is the variable of that so it's going to create this object for you that is the e object for you in this e object it is going to say that whether equal button is clicked if the equal button is clicked it's going to say that it is me who is creating that okay so in other words i am going to say which command so this is a, a command it's like when you click on a button something some action has to be taken so it's going to say which command has been clicked so suppose if you click on this uh, that is division this e is going to say the action command is this one okay action command is this and suppose if you click on this one action command is this one and so on and so forth so every button whenever they create a, whenever this they call this method they will supply a object called as e this contain the actions command that was uh, or with this contains some details about who created or who has invoked that particular method so i'm going to go here you know very well op is my operand okay operand and i am going to go to this one operand is equal to i'm going to go to this e you know very well what is this e e is that object that was created by all those buttons and i am going to ask that e get me the action command okay so what is it going to do is if you look at a, a, what is this a, what is it going to do is a, it's going to return a string saying which it's going to say this string whether it is a plus minus star equal this is going to give you that string okay so so when i know the string i know which uh, button is clicked so what is that i'm going to get uh, here is that okay why it is saying uh, there is an uh, error okay okay okay, okay. Oh, this uh, i need to uh, create a character out of uh, this one so how can i do that uh, so if i just say uh, which is uh, this one so i i may not, may not be able to directly give it to the opcode here because this opcode if you notice this is a character i've taken it as where is it i've taken it as a character but it is returning a string and then it means is saying that uh, this side is string and this side is character both of them are not compatible so what i can do is uh, what is the solution you know very well solution is just to create a, a temporary variable called as button uh, vtn and this say vtn so the problem is solved so what was the problem is uh, uh, netbeans uh, not netbeans actually the java says that uh, 
this op is a caret but what this is returning is a string so string cannot be given to a character so what i said okay you can't give it it's all right i am going to create a variable of type string now can you give it i guess simple as that so what is happening now is when i click on this plus button i am going to get this e from this e i am going to get which is this string that is this plus symbol and i am going to store this plus inside this button similarly when i click on equal so equal is going to give me this e object and i am going to say what is the action i am going to get this from this action command i am going to get this equal and i am going to store it in this button now based on these uh, buttons so we have to perform a different action remember when you have the two values here two operands and when you click on plus you have to just remember that plus has been done you are you are going to perform this action what do you mean by saying perform the action is the actual addition or subtraction or multiplication is performed only when somebody clicks on this equal button otherwise you are not going to do anything so when somebody clicks on this plus button you have to just remember that plus button was clicked just remember that so i am going to say for all these buttons that is plus minus star and uh, equal for all of them if they are clicked we are going to just remember that that button is clicked so how do i say that if the button remember what is this button button is uh, going to give you the text that uh, is there if this button that you are getting this btn okay if this is uh, i can't put uh, double equal here because it is a string and in java you know very well if it is equals to plus so then i am going to say if it is equal to that i am going to say that my operand is plus see remember this is a huge difference here when you write something in double quotes my mouse is dead so let me put it back so when you put something in double quotes it means it is a string when you put it in single quote it means a character so remember that particular thing don't put double click double quotes here because it is considered as a string and you know very well string cannot be given to a character but in this case it is a character that's why i can easily give that thing so what is that i am doing is let me tell you is when somebody clicks on this plus button i am going to get that thing plus and i am checking whether this button clicked was a plus and i am just storing it temporarily where is in this variable what is this variable it is the member variable that i have just created i am going to store it in other words i am going to remember that somebody has clicked the plus button in the uh, same way i have to remember the other one but the thing is uh, see uh, when somebody clicks on this plus button already the previous result might have been shown here some previous result may be there so i will clear the previous result if suppose some um, results are being shown the previous result the whatever they have performed if they are there i'm going to just clear that one how do i do that thing you know very well this particular text box is called as result so you remember that so you created three things so one is the result result is the this text field so this text field that you see here this is the result text field so i am going to go and uh, tell the result text field here i'm going to say result text field i'm going to say set text so i'm going to set the text as a blank so you know this is a blank text in other when you when you set the text as blank whatever that is uh, clicked uh, typed here will be cleared simple as okay. so let me compile and let me try to run it if it has compiled uh, let's see if it's not compiled i'm going to compile it now see what happens is uh, suppose say you typed two numbers let me get it uh, here okay. so two numbers are there let's assume that uh, the previous results are here 
So when I click on this plus sign, it's going to remember that a plus is uh, been clicked. Also, it will uh, uh, clear whatever the text which was there. So it will clear this text. So when I click on it, it will clear whatever that was there. The previous result, whichever was there, it's going to clear that. Okay, done with this one. Let's go ahead with the other part. So else, remember we have to do it for all the other buttons also. So else, the story is same. I'm going to just select this control C and after this else, I'm going to just paste it. Else if this button was, the button that was clicked is minus, I'm going to set the operand as minus. So because the minus button is clicked, the operand is minus. Same thing, else if star button is clicked, then the operand is the, the operator is a star. In the same way, else if division button is clicked, okay, the operation is division. And definitely you have to set uh, clear the text. So what is that uh, we have done is, uh, uh, the extra else is not really required. I'm going to remove the else from here. As of now, I'm going to just remove the else from here. So let me run it and let's see what's going to happen now. So what is happening now is if you have two numbers here, some two numbers here, and the previous, uh, not this one, previous results are here. Whenever I click on any of these, I'm going to set these operators. Suppose if I click on the minus, I am going to say if this minus is clicked, I am going to set the operator as minus. If this division is clicked, so if this division is clicked, I am going to set the operand as a division. And also after that, I am going to clear whatever the text which is there. Okay. So if I just click on the division, the previous text is cleared, but the division has been noted down. So it is going to make note of that. Now the thing is, what if somebody clicks on this equal? If somebody clicks on equal, then you will have to perform the calculation based on whether the person has clicked this one or this one or this one based on that. Remember, you are remembering this. You are, in other words, you are storing the last operator. So whatever operator the user has selected based on that, you have to perform. If the user has selected the plus operator, then you have to add them. If the user has selected the star operator, then you have to multiply it and so on and so forth. You have to do that one. So else, I'm going to say else, if the button that was clicked is equals, then you have to do the calculations. So if this button is clicked is equals, then there is no need to remember and uh, all these things. Huh? You don't need to do that thing. You have to do the real action. Okay, so that is what uh, you are supposed to do it. So somebody clicks on the equal button. You will do the real calculation. So let's look at uh, what the question says. Huh? When somebody clicks on the equal button, you have to show the result. Appropriate exception handling message has to be shown. So that means to say that you have to handle the exception. So when you are doing the calculation, let's perform the, so when you, when you are doing this equal button, perform the, or handle the exception. So here in this else part that you have it here, in this else part, I'm going to handle the exception. So how do you say that? I'm going to say try and I'm going to press control space. And NetBeans uh, has an option for me. Try with the finally, try with the, this one. I don't want finally. So I'm going to say try and catch. I'm going to just uh, press enter. So if you press control space, you'll get this one. Press enter and NetBeans will do the needful thing for you. Okay. Only one thing you must uh, remember here in this case only this e you notice that uh, it is uh, exception also gets one object called as e this e is already used here in the action listener there is a variable e so it is saying that uh, you cannot use the same variable name two times already you have said that action listener is uh, this one so you cannot use the same thing for the catch so what you can do you know very well if you can't uh, 
uh, you, they, there are a lot of words you can generate. I'm going to say ex is the exception. So e cannot be used because e is already taken up. E is already taken up in the action uh, event. So and next name is ex. In if you want e g h k anything anything apart from e because e is already taken up. You take any other name. So the simple as that. But I'm going to take ex just to make that this is an exception. Okay, so let's try to get uh, the exceptions now. Okay, so what is the exception that uh, you are supposed to get? So that is uh, the thing. One exception that you are supposed to handle is that if what they say that, okay, if number one and number two are not integer, then you have to handle the exception. So let me show what is the meaning of that. Suppose if you run this application and you expect that everybody is going to type 10 here, but I am going to type 10 like this. Okay. And I'm going to say 20. Now, now this cannot be converted into integer. Okay, this can be converted into integer. This is going to generate an exception. And you have to handle that exception. So if it is not an integer, you have to handle the exception. So let's try to handle the exception. So let's try to get the two numbers. Okay one after the other. So I am going to say int, I am going to say first number is n1 and you know very well which is the text field in which you are storing this number. You know that there are two text fields that you are using. One is a num1 and num2. There are two text fields that you are using. So from this num1, that is the first text field, I am going to say get the text that was typed there. So I'm going to get the text. Now, if you get this text, now just to tell you, let me show you. Uh, this text, get text, you know very well, text is in string. So one side you have string, the other side you have integer. So you cannot, Java says that that's not possible. String cannot be given to integer. So what to do? Convert this string into integer. So how do you do that thing? You know very well you have this integer class. So you go to the integer class, not this byte, integer class, and then you say that parse it um, as a string. So simple as that. I mean, just to make it uh, look beautiful for you by making some changes. So what you're saying is uh, this is a text, uh, this is a string. Convert this string into integer and store it here. Okay. Now let me just run it. Okay, uh, let me run this one. Let's see, I get uh, some error. Now, if you notice here, when you run it, if you type 10 here, remember 10 cannot be converted into integer. And if I say equal, you are not going to get any exception or nothing is going to happen. The reason is uh, you are handling this uh, exception, but you are not doing anything here. Okay, I want to see what is the exception that is generated. So how do I know which exception got generated? So again, whenever there is an exception, you are going to get this object EX. In the previous case, I said, whenever there is an event, you get this object E, which is going to say which button was clicked. In this case, EX is going to tell me which exception got generated. I'm going to show that exception in my result field. So whatever exception that is generated, I'm going to show if there is an exception, I'm going to show that exception in this result field. How am I going to do that thing? I'm going to go to this result. Remember this text, uh, this particular uh, text box or this uh, text field is called as a result. Just to tell you that uh, there is a number one, number two and result. Result is the third text field. Remember that's the third text field. So I'm going to go to this uh, third text field here. That is my result. Okay. And I'm going to set the text inside it. I'm going to say set the text and ex is there. So ex is this object. Remember ex is this object, exception object. And I'm going to say get the message. Get this message. ex dot get message. Okay. Just to tell you which is that exception that got generated. Let me run it. 
and I'm going to type the 10 here as usual. I'm going to type 10 here. I click on equal and uh, you notice that uh, uh, input string you have uh, there is a problem with this input string and uh, there is actually uh, instead of get message I'm going to say there is one other thing the get message will not uh, show you the whole story instead of this uh, it will just show you the simplest one I'm going to use a uh, two string method so where is this uh, a two string method two string method I'm going to just call this uh, two string method and uh, I'm going to just save it and then run it the two string method will give you a lot of uh, hint into as to what it is trying to do so I'm going to just type 10 and equal so this is uh, you notice that uh, this exception that uh, it got generated is number format exception this is the exception now, now if you just call this uh, on the get message and that message is going to just show you this message whereas two string is going to even tell you that this exception is called as a java uh, the uh, lang dot number format exception so you have to handle this number format exception okay so you have to say to the user that this is not the message you will show to the user you are going to say that this 10 is not a integer okay, you're going to say that particular thing okay so how do you do that thing first of all i have to catch not this one i have to catch a very different exception what is this exception uh, when i was talking i was i just copy pasted it so i used the control c in the exception and let me show you one more time so what i did was uh, i i raised this exception by typing 10 i raised that exception and as i was talking i just selected this word number format exception control c and i'm going to paste it here so as simple as that okay so this exception is number format exception okay so this exception is that but uh, the problem with the, uh, the exception the, this semicolon is not there that's why it just uh, it, it blew its mind i just pressed the colon so it just said what is this a colon you type okay this is number format exception and what is the message that i am going to uh, show is uh, okay uh, what is this uh, not an integer okay not integer okay so this is uh, the thing that's that's uh, because uh, i'm going to correct this uh, problem there is one minor problem there i will handle that minor problem slightly with the explanation i'm going to tell you so now you type this 10 here and 10 here and you click equal you say not integer now which among them is not integer so if you type 10 here and uh, 1 here, again it's going to say not integer. Which one is not integer? So you have to say to the user which among them was not an integer. Okay. So this this is a trick that is all. Uh, logically you have to say uh, what which among them was not an integer. Okay. So how do you do that thing? Just uh, This is just a twist that uh, you have to use it. I'm going to create one additional variable i need to create one additional variable here and uh, i will create a string variable str okay. string variable str just to create one extra variable string variable str this is just to get that one thing see how, how much trouble you have to take just to get something in hand so you just create one variable here and what i am doing is uh, I am going to read this part, say number one dot get string. I'm going to say str is equal to this. I get the, in other words, from the text field, okay, from the text field, I first read that thing to this string. Okay. Yeah, this is double extra work. You may say this is extra work. Why can't you do it there only? I, I'm doing it just for some reason. Okay. and from this string I'm going to show that I am going to convert it uh, there okay I get this one 
So from the text field, you may say that that's extra thing, sir. You're doing it. Why you are? Uh, why can't you just uh, ask it directly? So first, I read it to a string, and this string, I am passing it to integer. So what is that I am doing is, when I have this, uh, remember this is a class level variable or this is a member variable. So uh, this. Uh, its visibility is there even outside this method. So when the exception is generated, I'm going to take this str and I'm going to say str has that 10, 20, whatever you typed, that value will is there with the str. So I'm going to say this str, what you typed is not integer. So let's go to the exception here. And in the exception, I am going to say here is, okay, input we say input and i'm going to use this square bracket just to make the things look neatly okay plus str i'm concatenating it okay and i'm going to say this so this in between i'm showing it so input 10 is not an integer let me show it in the output how is it going to look like okay let's save it and just run it and let me Show you how is it going to look like so i'm going to type let me zoom in for you i'm going to type 10 here okay when i click on equal you notice that input 10 should have used one space there input 10 is not an integer let me make it uh, i think that is enough not integer okay so let me make slightly looking slight to beautiful okay it's by putting one extra space is not integer okay so let me save it and let's uh, do it and this is just to beautify the things uh, not uh, really something that uh, there is a logic in one okay if i say one here okay and if i click uh, equal it's a input one so this is one is not integer okay, so got it so it looks beautiful Okay, so that's what uh, I want to show and this is what they have said you have to show the uh, message this message that is a uh, exception handling message has to be shown in the result field this is what they've said that is why I'm showing it uh, in the result field they have said that thing in this uh, place they've said show it in the exception messages uh, has to be shown in the has to be displayed in the text field so that is what i am doing it okay so if you're wondering why you are doing this one so okay so let's do the same old thing for the number two also that is second number so i'm going to copy this one control c and control v this time i am going to get it from the second text field and i am going to take this number as number two this is number first number which was taken from the number one second number taken from number two okay so let's see uh, this in action so when i run this particular thing let's look at uh, the uh, what you have achieved suppose if you say what is that great thing you have achieved suppose if you say first number is 10 and second number is 5 okay when you click on equal you notice that input 10 is proper 5 is not an integer suppose if you make this as 5 and if you make it as 7 okay you click equal you say input 7 is not integer we hope you get that if you make both of them a proper number you won't get anything because there is nothing exception that is not generated okay so don't uh, get confused uh, with that if both of them are uh, proper you won't get um, any exception so let's go ahead and let's uh, continue with our work okay this is done now we are supposed to do the one more thing and what is this uh, one more thing that uh, we are uh, supposed to do is we are supposed to do the calculation actual calculation so we start with the remember whenever somebody clicked on uh, the plus minus whatever it is we were storing it in the op here we were storing everything in this op so we will check which was the operator operator that the user has clicked based on that we are going to perform the action so if uh, the user has clicked on um, the plus operator remember this time i can use double equal to because it is a character you can directly compare this uh, character uh, by using double equal sir okay so if it is a plus what is that you are supposed to do is you just add them so you add n1 plus n2 okay 
and you show it in the result so what is this uh, result you have this uh, result dot set text you want to show it in the result and you show this one in the in this now only problem with the, this part is uh, you will get an uh, error now because this is an integer now, when you add two integer you are going to get an integer itself but this time you are setting it as a text text is not equal to integer so what you are going to do what is the solution a solution you can convert it into you can do lot of things on earth one of the easiest way of solving this problem is you use the board mass rule first do the calculation okay you do this calculation plus and you know very well when you add anything to string the whole thing becomes string remember when you concatenate whether it is integer float whatever it is when you concatenate a object with this uh, a string that whole thing becomes string so as simple as that this is the simplest thing that you can do you when you add two integers you are going to get this integer result this integer result is uh, concatenated to a string that whole thing becomes string and you can because this the whole thing is a string you can set it as a text as simple as that okay that is for uh, the which button the plus button what you are going to do for minus button so for minus button you are not going to do any extra work here instead of plus you say it is minus okay what about uh, again i have copy pasted up uh, i am used to this control c and control v okay so i'm control c and control v i'm doing it so you have this star and what you are going to do is you are going to do this star what about division you are going to do this division okay you are going to do this uh, division okay else is not really required so this is the end of it okay. you have handled that one okay now let's run it and let's see whether we are getting the result so let me run it and let's see what is going to happen so you have this uh, 5 and uh, you have uh, say let's say 10 let me make it as 10 and 5 okay 10 plus 5 you are not showing the result oh my god you are not able to show the result what is happening okay so what is uh, going wrong here you are not able to uh, see anything there so did i plus uh, equal to okay 15 okay minus equal to minus 5 into 50 divide equal to 2 so that everything is good but there is one thing that they have already told they have already given you that hint and what is that hint is if the number 2 is 0 you will get division by 0 error so let's make the second number this number 2 means uh, not this uh, number 2 this uh, number 2 means this uh, second number is uh, that is what uh, if the second number is 0 if you add it nothing is going to happen 10 plus 0 is uh, if you multiply it is going to be 0 10 into 0 if you divide what is going to happen suppose uh, when you uh, let me show the thing here let me show the net beans here and i am going to do the division okay so division is performed it is going to generate an exception okay you are going to get an exception which is that exception okay you have to handle that exception now you know very well whether uh, i don't know whether when you are doing this practical whether that story is uh, told to you or not let me use this uh, catch here and i'm going to use this uh, exception the previous one which was the exception ex okay exception just remember this word exception is the mother of all the exception what is this exception this word exception is the mother of all the exception if you handle this exception you don't need to handle any other exception because this is going to handle everything for you so whatever exception is generated it can be taken up by this exception okay what about this one this cannot take uh, the other type of exception it is a specific exception number format exceptions are only handled by this or it is only taken by this it will not take any other exception i'm going to go to this uh, result text as usual i'm going to go to this result text and i am going to say 
ex dot to string method just to get that exception which is that exception that it is generating so let me run it now okay let me run it and uh, let me take this 5 divid divided by 0 and uh, division and when i click equal you notice uh, the exception that is uh, created is not a division by 0 this is not uh, the exception exception name is the arithmetic exception so i'm going to just copy this control c to just copy it this is the exception okay so i'm going to now come here okay. now come here and paste it this is the name of the exception that exception is called as not division by zero exception it is called as arithmetic exception okay and i am going to give a message not this message i'm going to give a beautiful message to the user saying that okay what is it division by zero zero error okay so why did i use that thing i think uh, this was what they have said division uh, uh, you show a division by zero error. Okay, so this is what uh, they have said. So let's do this uh, action. Let me run it now. And let's see what is going to happen. So you have uh, these uh, two. Okay. 10, 0. Okay, I say equal. Okay, and then uh, when I say you're going to get a division by zero error. Suppose if you make it as two and then you press equal it's going to do the calculation so suppose if you make it as zero and remember it is already known division is already known it's already stored get a division by zero here. suppose if you write zero here and if you press equal you're going to say input zero is not an integer you're going to get that one okay so that one uh, so this is how you're going to handle the exception. This is what they have said to handle the exception. You are going to handle this exception. I'm going to just remove a few lines of uh, these uh, things from here. So this is the exception. So this is what they said. You handle the exception. I have handled the exception and uh, uh, everything according to their statement. We have done it. Let me run it for the final round and uh, let me run it. And uh, this is what uh, they have said. So according to them, let's uh, uh, see what uh, they have said. So according to them, we are supposed to take uh, two uh, text fields, number one and number two. We have taken the number one and number two. So this is number two. And uh, when uh, you press uh, any operation and uh, you press this, uh, and when you click on equal sign, if the second number is not... Uh, an integer or first or second number is not an integer you must get an uh, error message suppose if the second number is an integer and uh, if you do any calculation it must show you the result it's going to show the result also if the second number is zero this is what they said you must uh, and if you are performing the division operation only for uh, the problem is only with the division operation you must get division by zero error and you are getting it so this is what we are supposed to do it in the exercise and uh, this is what uh, we have done thank you for your interest we will meet again in the other exercise thank you